Chiefs Kingdom. Welcome back to All Chiefs Stuff. We're back with another podcast for that ass. And today we're talking about Chiefs top 30 visits thus far. Steve, let's talk about it. Before we get the show started, I just wanted to take a second and say thanks for watching All Chiefs Stuff. We appreciate you. Please hit that like button for us. Get this out to more Chiefs fans. And also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Mike, let's talk about these top 30 visits. This is going to be an exciting draft this year. It is. Let's start off with the wide receiver position, Steve. We looked at a wide receiver named Anthony Gold from Oregon State. You can see here he is from Leavenworth, Kansas. A little hometown kid, if you must. Uh, 5'8", 174, 29 5 eighth inch arms, and 8, 7 and 8 inch hands, Steve. So not the biggest hands, not the longest arms. Let's see how he did at the combine. He wore a 4'3", 40. That is blazing, Steve. A 1-4-9, 10-yard split. 39 and a half inch vertical, 10 9 broad jump, and a 416 shuttle. And that puts him right here, man, at the combine. Production score, not very good. 30th out of all receivers there. But second in athleticism and 18th overall total score, Steve. What do you think about Anthony Gold? This seems like a receiver in the mold of what Andy Reid and Brett Veach like. Well, he's a wee little guy. He's just a little tiny guy, Mike. He's a little tiny man. He's a little guy, but he's really fast. You know, he's electrifying with the deep routes. You know, he can he can beat the safeties. Right. Uh, just super fast, super athletic. Like you said, he was second in athleticism. Is that what it was? Second? Uh, that's, yeah, that's ridiculous. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, they might be trying to get back to just having a fast wide receiver squad. I mean, we, we all know about the Legion of Zoom, Mike. Everyone used to talk about those guys. Maybe they're trying to get back to that. They went and got Marquise Brown, who's got blazing speed. Rasheed Rice is not slow by any means. And then if you were to add some little guy like Anthony Gold that can get out there and fly across the field as well, a lot of speed equals trouble for defenses. Uh, right. Anthony Gold, also, uh, he offers you a lot of special teams value. Uh, I'll play a little clip of him at the, uh, at the, uh, the bowl game he was invited to. Uh, he he can get open, man. You can see in the clip, he can get open. You see him find a place here, and, and he finds the space in the zone, gets behind the linebacker, makes a heck of a catch. But he can also return punts. He can return kicks. He's really good at what he does. Now, his limitations are straight limitations, man. Like, he's got some hip tightness. He doesn't really sink and, and stop on his, uh, on his routes. Uh, he has a tendency to drift, you know. There's just different things that's not to like about him. And I think the big thing is is like trying to find where Anthony Gold could fit within an NFL offense and who he could fit with. I think if you take everybody out of the equation, the Chiefs are the team that always find uh, use out of these little receivers, man, because Patrick Mahomes is used to it, right? You've got to find somebody that can hit this guy. He doesn't have a big wingspan. He doesn't have long arms. His catch radius is small. You've got to find a guy that can put it on the money, and I think they do that, Steve. This is his RAS score. He's got an 814 RAS. Uh, his height, weight is obviously the very poor, uh, but he's got a pretty good broad jump. I think he ended up finishing with a pretty good vertical, too. I'll say that he looks pretty explosive with a 439 and a 149 10-yard split. That is in the elite range. So Anthony Gold is a guy, again, hometown, Leavenworth, Kansas, it's not really that close, I guess, but but it's it's a guy from the area. And so I think they did that uh, for that reason. Well, they like to look at guys like that, you know? But let's move on. Marshawn Nealon's the next guy in they brought in. He's an edge out of Western Michigan. Uh, he's kind of rising up draft boards just a little bit. He was, he was rumored to be about a third, fourth-round pick, and then as the draft processes went on, he has now maybe got himself into the second round. 6'3", 267, 34 and a half inch arms, which is really good, Steve. Nine and eighth inch hands. He, on the other hand, 4.75 40-yard dash, not too bad. A 10-yard split of a 1.66, 35.5-inch vert, and you can read the rest of it. 21 reps on the bench press. And look at his numbers as a score breakdown. 15th in production, 1st in athleticism among defensive ends at the Combine, and 8th total score. So Marshawn Nealon, Steve, that's a guy that Spax could have a lot of fun with here on the defensive line. Absolutely. A lot of athleticism for Marshawn Nealon. If you watch the tape, he's actually a converted tight end. Like he was a tight end in high school. Uh, yeah. So definitely athletic. Uh, he runs really well. Uh, he's very fluid, Mike. Change of direction. Like he can get a lot of things done. He always gets a good push up front. His first hit counts and he gets a good push in the pass rush all the time. So I think that's definitely something that the Chiefs could be looking at. Uh, we've got to figure out what to do with the defensive line. We've talked about how there is some holes there. A lot of the defensive tackles that they filled up were just one-year deals. The the edge rushers 
which like Marshawn Nealon, he could definitely help because right now we don't know what they're going to do with Charles O'Menehue. They might cut him. They right. might not. Uh, but then Mike Dana has not been re-signed yet. We don't know if he'll be back. Uh, but we're literally like relying on Felix and, and BJ Thompson right now. Both guys that didn't see a whole lot of the field last season. Uh, of course, George Karloftis is going to be a force. He he has been for two years now, and he'll continue to get better. But I think we adding there would not be a bad idea. I think it's definitely one of the thinner spots on the team that we could address. Right. Marshawn Nealon, I think he's a guy that could probably set the edge pretty well in the Spags defense. He relies a lot on the bull rush for sure. Uh, he was a two-star recruit coming out in 2019. Uh, he's had a couple injuries. He missed three games in 2022 with a lower leg injury. And then in 2023, uh, this past season, he missed two games with an arm injury. Uh, but he's got a 17.3% pass rush win rate. That's pretty good. And he's also got a true pass set pass rush grade of an 873 And a lot of people say, hey, man, PFF grades, PFF grades. His overall grade this year was an 89.7. He had six Six sacks, three hits, 28 hurries, and a batted ball. And by the way, he can play a little bit of everywhere. He played a few snaps in the B-gap. He played 34 snaps over tackle, and then he played 435 outside the tackle. So he can move up and down the line. Uh, He's got better each year he's been at college, but he's going to base everything around his bull rush. He doesn't have a lot of finesse. Uh, He's almost, in a way, Steve, I I don't want to say this because a lot of people have soured on Felix. He looks less polished than Felix coming out of college. Just put it that way. Right, right. He looks less polished. And if you thought Felix struggled, I think Marshawn Nila could also struggle. But by the way, the kid has a high motor, and he's he's more like the George Karloftis work kind of guy than the finesse kind of Felix. So maybe he will find some, some success. I just don't know if I feel comfortable uh, taking him in the second round as of right now. I, I would feel better if we could grab him at 90-ish in the third round, but... I just don't think he's going to fall that far. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a very good pass rusher, but like you said, he needs to diversify his, his attack a little bit more. He has no finesse. Um, and I think the thing about it is Mike, like Felix, you noticed back when uh, in his college state, he was able to stack moves and and counter, uh, the blocks and this and that, like, you don't see that much from Marshawn Nealon. It's pretty much a straight bull rush, kind of like George Karloftis. So you kind of hit the nail on the head with that. But I do think there's a high upside for this kid. So, yeah. I mean, I, I would be okay with, with uh, taking a stab at him, but I'm I'm with you. I think third round seems a little more comfortable to me. Right. Uh, it looks like if he's going to go, it will be second round. I just don't right. know. I'm one of those people that I don't want to overdraft what's on my board. If you want to take him in the second, by all means, go ahead. And if you hit, you hit. I just don't feel comfortable there. Uh, let's go ahead and go on to the next guy, Steve. Uh, we got a little Christian mahogany action. I have... Many leather-bound books, and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> you got to put that up. Every time we talk mahogany, we talk of Ron Burgundy, Steve. Uh, he went to BC. He's a BC lineman, by the way. 6'3", 3'14", 33 and a uh, half-inch arms, 10 and a half-inch hands. So he's got pretty long arms. He's got pretty big hands. If you look at what he did, he ran a 5'1", 3'40", 1'7", 10-yard split, 32 and a half-inch vert, and a 4 5 3 20 yard shuttle, which not too bad there. And if you look at his production score, he was third, fifth in athleticism, and second overall, Steve. Christian Mahogany, by the way, a 9.6 on the RAS score from Christian Mahogany. So he is a heck of an athlete, man. What do you think about Christian Mahogany, a big ugly on the inside, knowing that Tooney's getting older, and we may not get the other guy back on the other side Trey that we Smith. love so much, Trey <laughs> Smith. So... Yeah, that's the thing about it. Christian Mahogany reminds me of Trey Smith sometimes when I watch his tape because he's just got a ton of upper body power, and he's like a mauler. Like, he's real scrappy, and he likes to finish plays. It it definitely reminds me of Trey Smith. I think the Chiefs definitely have to consider inside offensive line, and much like defensive end, it's just one of the thinner spots on the team that we've got to get some depth. Uh, The offensive line, we we all know there's still a left tackle problem. We don't know what they're going to do there. But like you were mentioning, Joe Tooney is on a huge contract. Uh, don't know how much longer he's going to be with the Chiefs. They've got to turn around and re-sign Trey Smith. We just lost Darian Kennard. He went to the Eagles. That was somebody we thought could come in and play guard. Uh, we lost Allegretti to the Commanders. Right. We do have Caliendo on the back burner. But other than that, we need some depth at offensive line. And I really do like what this kid has to offer. So I think uh, – 
you couldn't be mad at a pick like that. Any time that you're reinforcing the offensive line or you're or you're drafting in the trenches, you can't really get mad at it. Right. I'm a big uh, mahogany fan. If I'm not mistaken, I have him rated right now. He's my number seven interior offensive lineman out of everybody right now. Uh, I think he's pretty. Uh, He's got a pretty solid game. Coming out of BC, we know BC linemen always offer a lot. Uh, that's one thing. Now, I will say this. Uh, he was a three-star recruit coming out in 2019, and he's had some injuries. He missed all of 2022 with a torn ACL. So that is something. He was invited to the East-West Shrine Bowl game this year, and he looked pretty good there. And I think the Chiefs are using these top 30 visits, and we'll talk more about this in a minute with the next player, but they're looking at these top 30 visits, Steve, I think they're assessing some medicals is what I think they're doing here because he had an ACL injury he's recovering from. I think they want to talk to him about it. Uh, But getting back to his play on the field, in 2021, as a freshman, he had an 83 PFF score. He only allowed one sack and four hurries. He missed all of 2022 again with the ACL. But he come back in 2023, he scored a 79 PFF. He had zero sacks on zero hits, and he only allowed seven hurries. So, he knows how to play the position. He really does. He's a road ga- grader. I will say that he's not very quick with his feet. He will get beat with that. Um, if you look, though, his pass block grade's an 82.2. His run block grade is a 74.5. And, and his true pass uh, set pass block grade is an 80.6. So he can flat out play the position. Like you said, he's like a road grader. He's a big guy. He can pull. He can kick. He can get to the second level. But he does have some issues uh, with his footwork. I think the footwork is there, but that can be taught. Well, and I'm not also, so much worried about it. Also noticed that early on in his tape that he had a bit of problem with his footwork, but it seemed to me that he was improving over the season. Uh, right. So I definitely see an up, upward trajectory on that and an uptrend. So like you said, I think this is a guy that can be coached. Uh, so I don't think the footwork is as big of a problem as people say. I think it looked like towards the end of the season, like his later tape I thought looked fine. Right right now, I have him as a round two grade, early round three. The Chiefs would probably have to take a stab at him in the second. That's about the same spot you probably have to take a stab at Marshawn Nealon. So I think they're kind of getting all these guys bunched together on their boards, and they're, they're going to hammer all this out with these top 30 visits, and they're going to ask, and they're going to get in depth with all this, Steve. Uh, we have one more guy, and we want to talk about, I like this one right here, Eric All. Uh, he played at Michigan. He transferred over to Iowa. Uh, He's from Ohio. He's 6'4", 252, 33-inch arms, 10 and an eighth inch uh, hands. He did not run at the combine or anything. He's recovering uh, from an injury. But he has a – he's 10th in production, 14th in athleticism, and 12th uh, total score overall, Steve. Eric All, he started off in Michigan, man. He was there with Joe Milton. He ended up finishing his – I want to say it was his junior or sophomore season – or junior or senior season, my bad – and, and he hurt his back. He had to have back surgery. We talked about this in our live. He had to have back surgery. He blamed people at Michigan. He thought there was something there. They were giving him bad advice. So he ends up going to Iowa. And at Iowa, he immediately was making an impact. But he tore his ACL. So in back-to-back seasons, he had to end with back surgery and ACL. And I know a lot of people are going to say, my God, that's horrible. But here's the thing. I think nowadays with the advances of medicine, and that's not being the same injury over and over again, I think teams will take a flyer on these kinds of kids because why? Brett Veach is probably not going to sign this guy to a second contract in the first place. So if you can get three or four good years out of him, who cares? You're not drafting this guy in the fifth round to see if he can be a lifelong 15-year season you know, veteran with the Chiefs. That's not what he's here for. And this is one of the only guys out of the entire tight end class, Steve, that I thought shown any pop and any spark in the past game. I've got him ranked number six right now behind Theo Johnson and Ben Sinnott at four and five. And technically, he probably jumps those if you take out the two injuries. So what do you think about it, man? I think it's a good a good option at pass catcher there late in the draft. Um, I do think it would be a good option. It's definitely a risk. There's a little bit of risk with it. Uh, but it's, it's a boomer bust pick, sort of. But, I mean, if you get them late, it's not that big of a deal, right? Uh, right. His agility, athleticism, uh, great. Uh, he has an expanded route tree. Uh, he can do a lot of different things on offense. He's great at contested catches. Uh, I mean, he, it says he's willing to strike with some force uh, as split zone and lead blocker. So that shows you right there. He's, he don't care to get out there and play ball, man. Uh, but he does have the injuries. If you look at the weaknesses that the NFL uh, scouts posted, 
uh, they all pertain to his injuries. Right. It's literally uh, su- suffered season-ending injury in back-to-back seasons. Yeah. Played in just 10 games over the last two seasons. That's not really a whole lot of knock on him. It's like, durability uh, concerns. That's basically exactly. it. Like other what? than that, like I, I think that he would be totally solid. The only other thing they even knock him on is the fact that they say that he makes ridiculously tough catches, but easy ones he lets slip by sometimes. So I think that's just a focus thing. But I mean, overall, man, I feel like the only knocks on this kid are the injuries. Other than that, it's all positive. Right. Look, when I watched him, like I said, he showed pop. He showed flash in the past game. He won 50-50 balls with ease. He could find soft spots in the defense. Uh, he cre- he created after the catch. That's one thing you didn't see a lot of tight ends in this class be able to do too well. Uh, very soft hands. He's uh, elusive, deceptively elusive, by the way. Uh, but again, he did drop some passes there with Michigan. But Joe Milton, as the quarterback, he's got one one trick. He's a one-trick pony, and that's to throw the ball 150 miles an hour. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but if you want to look at blocking, this is where Eric Hall also accelerates at. Go back and watch a little bit of film from 2022, uh, Michigan versus Ohio State, and watch some of his run blocking ability versus Ohio State, and watch the game, Hassan Haskins. I know you remember that running back come out about a year ago from Michigan. Hassan Haskins had a monster day all because of Eric All and the way he could block. He's a willing blocker. I think he can come in and compete right away with a, a tight end three, maybe even do what Noah Gray uh, is asked to do. And that way, if they don't want to re-sign Noah Gray afterwards, uh, you can let him walk a little bit, you know, if you get this guy in here and let it go. But, Steve, uh, I think it, it, we show that we're looking at a lot of different things. We've looked at an interior lineman. We've looked at a tight end. We've looked at a defensive end. We've looked at the wide receiver. Of course, we're going to look at wide receivers. But right now, we know a four that they've brought in. Uh, We're going to keep you guys up to date if they bring in any more, and we're going to break them down in depth like this. If you guys haven't seen our video prior to this, uh, I think last week or the week before, we talked about everybody the Chiefs have interviewed at all the the All-Star games and everything. So go back and watch that video, Steve. Do you got anything left for them besides liking and subscribing to this video? No. Bye. See ya. 